This week's blog post is the 11th in my series on visiting the Wadsworth Athenaeum. This week's post is mostly on the legacy of the Colt family to the Wadsworth and on the Charter Oak in Connecticut. This huge, about four by six feet, charming lion was a billboard for a tavern on the Albany Hartford Turnpike. Rice, who painted such signs throughout New England, attracted the attention of travelers by using bold imagery, gilt paint, and ground glass to make the signs reflective. Hartford is now known as the insurance capital of the world, but in the mid-19th century, access to water power helped make it one of the early hubs of the Industrial Revolution in the United States. The man responsible for starting Hartford's growth was Samuel Colt, a Connecticut native. In 1836, Colt received a patent for a revolver that could fire multiple times without reloading and without manually aligning the cylinder and the barrel. The U.S. government ordered a thousand Colt revolvers during the Mexican-American War, 1846 to 48. By 1855, Colt had constructed a large factory near downtown Hartford, recognizable for a blue onion dome that was spangled with gilt stars and topped by a rearing horse. You can just barely see it over here and over here. Colt's revolvers were constructed with interchangeable parts on an assembly line. The factory's workers were housed in Coltsville, a city within a city. Soon after his factory was completed in 1855, Samuel Colt commissioned the views here of his factory with its distinctive dome and the neighboring city of Hartford. The unknown artist was probably a local man. When he died in 1862, Samuel Colt was one of the wealthiest men in America. His wife Elizabeth took over the Colt factory, running it for 43 years and becoming one of the earliest and most prominent women industrialists in the United States. With the aid of Frederick Church of the Hudson River School, Elizabeth also formed a notable collection of artworks by Thomas Cole, John Kensett, and others. Dying in 1905 without heirs, five children predeceased her, Elizabeth bequeathed her collection to the Wadsworth Athenaeum, along with money for construction of a new wing for the museum. And here we have Samuel Colt himself. It's by Edward Sheffield Bartholomew, who was born in Connecticut and trained in Rome. He was commissioned by Colt to sculpt busts of Samuel Colt himself and his family. They were executed in the popular neoclassical style, which is why he's got a sort of Roman toga. This charming little, it's called a maquette, it's a model, might be eight inches high. It was a small-scale model for the figure on the base of the Colt Monument in Colt Park, which is shown up here at the upper right. The Colt Park sits on the site of Samuel and Elizabeth's estate. Young Samuel, who was born in 1814, was fascinated with fireworks. After one particularly explosive July 4th celebration, his father sent him off to sea. There he was inspired by a ship's capstan to design a revolver whose cylinders would automatically align with the barrel. Earlier revolvers had required that the shooter manually align the cylinder and the barrel. Samuel carved his first model out of wood while he was at sea, and several of the original carvings are in this case, which is very cool. Back in America, Samuel raised money for production of his revolver by performing nitrous oxide, laughing gas, demonstrations across the U.S. and Canada. This is the work of John Massey Rind, who also did several works in New York City, notably General Alexander Stuart Webb, which is on the City of New York campus up in the 130s. What is the Charter Oak, you ask? But only if you weren't raised in Connecticut. So let me tell you. In 1662, King Charles II granted Connecticut a charter that gave it an unusual degree of self-government. In 1687, so barely 20 years later, British Governor General Andros, wishing to impose a more authoritarian colonial government, attempted to seize the charter. Yes, that would have been largely a symbolic gesture. He could do what he wanted. According to legend, while Andros was examining the document, the charter, the candles were suddenly extinguished 
and Captain Joseph Wadsworth, ancestor of the founder of the Wadsworth Athenaeum, spirited the charter away. He hid it in a huge white oak tree in Hartford, which was known henceforth as the Charter Oak. When the tree was blown down in a storm in 1856, Connecticut residents made many commemorative drawings and paintings, including the one on the left. The frame of this painting was carved from pieces of the Charter Oak's wood. Innumerable other objects, large and small, were carved from the Charter Oak's wood, which was sold or gifted by the man who owned the property at the time. Among the objects were chairs for three members of Connecticut's legislature, and a chair that was carved by Frederick Church and is still on display in his home, Olana, in New York. The Hartford City Council commissioned John Most and Charles Berger to create a chair for the mayor from the wood of the Charter Oak. It's complete with the arms of Hartford and Connecticut down here. But the city didn't pay its bill, and Samuel Colt purchased the chair instead. The Charter Oak stood on land that once belonged to George Willis, 1598 to 90, to 1644-45, whose home was included in the distance of this painting. This is the Charter Oak here, and that's the Willis house. And finally for this week, on a more personal level, Samuel and Elizabeth Colt commissioned this elaborate cradle for their firstborn son, who unfortunately died in infancy. Notice the rearing colts on the uprights. The wood is from the Charter Oak, and the amethyst, topaz, and other precious stones come from Russia. DianeDurantiWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my many other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on dianedurantywriter.com. As always, thanks for listening.